So my name is um, Jill Webster and I'm the Chief Science Officer for Innate Immunotherapeutics. We're a company with our main focus on our clinical candidate for secondary progressive multiple sclerosis called MIS416. And I've been developing this now for nine years. So we're targeting secondary progressive multiple sclerosis and important to our um, program was the recognition of the fact that secondary progressive multiple sclerosis is in fact very different to relapse remitting multiple sclerosis where there are um, quite a portfolio of therapies approved um, for treating that, that stage of multiple sclerosis. So secondary progressive multiple sclerosis currently um, has no approved therapy and none of the drugs approved for relapse remitting multiple sclerosis effectively target the progressive stage of disease. In trying to understand secondary progressive multiple sclerosis <clears throat> and why it can't be targeted by um, therapies approved for relapse remitting multiple sclerosis, we came to appreciate the fundamental difference in the disease promoting mechanisms involved in those two stages of disease. So whilst the relapse remitting multiple sclerosis, it's very much driven by peripheral biology, what we call outside in. Secondary progressive multiple sclerosis um, is no longer associated with or dependent upon peripheral, peripheral outside in biology and more reflects a compartmentalized inflammation that is actually contained now within the central nervous system. So it's somewhat isolated now from the periphery. And what drives this stage of progressive disease are what we um, can call innate inflammatory pathways. These are the, the key cellular drivers of disease. And relapse remitting therapies, interestingly, are aimed at um, targeting the adaptive wing of the immune system as opposed to the innate wing of the immune system. And this could really be one very obvious reason why relapse remitting therapies do not work for progressive um, disease, because they're actually targeting different pathways. So we chose to focus on um, the fundamental question of how can we control innate inflammation that is contained within the central nervous system. So one of the important questions is understanding how this innate inflammation that drives progressive MS <clears throat> can be targeted. One of the important points to um, understand and appreciate about the innate wing of the immune system is during early multiple sclerosis and the relapse remitting stage, the innate wing of the immune system actually effectively puts a break on the relapsing biology. And that's why these patients flare up and flare down. The flare-up is controlled by the innate wing of the immune system responding to the flare-up and feeding back to suppress those flares. It takes some time to um, move from the relapse remitting to the progressive stage of multiple sclerosis and during that period, in essence, there is a long, smouldering, chronic inflammation ongoing. And we believe that the innate wing of the immune system becomes exhausted and it can no longer put a break on these inflammatory pathways. And it's this hypothesis <clears throat> and the recognition of um, the innate wing perhaps being um, an unappreciated target for um, progressive multiple sclerosis that led to the development of MIS as a means to reinstate or re-establish or reboot um, a, the defective wing of the innate immune system.
So MIS416 is designed to specifically stimulate um, the myeloid cell subset of the innate wing of the immune system. These myeloid cells are central to the control of inflammation. And certain functions of these myeloid cells are critical to shutting off inflammatory pathways that drive progressive multiple sclerosis. We now understand what sort of uh, molecular cues can be used to turn on those cells. And we're able to recognize that these cues are also used by bacteria. So we've taken a whole bacterium and we've modified it extensively to retain two elements that we know are effective at targeting regulatory myeloid pathways. So these regulatory myeloid pathways are those pathways that normally function in a, in a healthy person and naturally stop inflammation um, becoming uncontrolled. So with our modified bacterium, MIS416, containing just two, two specific ligands for myeloid cells, we have been able to show that we're able to very effectively stimulate these myeloid cells to behave in two beneficial ways. So one of the important things that um, myeloid cells can do um, is make anti-inflammatory factors. MIS416 is very effective at stimulating myeloid cells to make a very well-known anti-inflammatory cytokine called interleukin-10. In fact, interleukin-10 has been trialed in the clinic for multiple sclerosis. As well as inducing myeloid cells to make interleukin-10, we also can stimulate myeloid cells to perform other functions, such as clearing debris. During secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, Cellular debris um, builds up within the central nervous system. This debris is from dying neurons and as well as other accessory cells within the central nervous system. Normally these cells are um, cleared effectively by the enabling of the immune system. During, de during progressive MS, this, these clearance mechanisms become choked up kind of constipated. Without debris clearance, there can be no repair or, or they, the central nervous system can't um, reorganize itself. One of the things that MIS416 does to um, the myeloid cells is enhance their ability to clear debris. We think this may be a very important um, aspect to a mechanism of action. All of our patients that we've treated to date have reported on a, on a range of improvements, but in particular, reduction in pain, reduction in fatigue. Pain and fatigue are well understood to be affected by inflammatory pathways. The fact that our patients show um, less fatigue and less pain to us is clear evidence that we are um, promoting some sort of repair pathway or pathways within the central nervous system. Clearance of debris Secretion of anti-inflammatory factors are, are two mechanisms that could contribute towards improving the health of the central nervous system and allowing some sort of repair to occur in these patients. 
some other mechanisms that we've identified in our um, early clinical trial patients is also the ability of MIS416 to stimulate the enabling of the immune system to make growth factors and other proteins that are associated with neuroprotection. The fact that we can measure these in the blood plasma of treated patients therefore poses a very real scenario that these growth factors and neuroprotective factors may also access the central nervous system where they can act locally to further counteract the ongoing neuroinflammation that would normally lead to cell death. If we can increase the CNS concentration of neuroprotective factors and growth factors, this likely would allow the neurons and also the other cells within the central nervous system to survive under inflammatory stress.